All right, we are in Idaho today with the legend Tony, and we are going to talk about extreme cold weather wing falling. Let's do it. This is definitely the, the most gnarly condition I've been in. Wing is icing up, but got the dry suit. I'm nice and ready. I'm just gonna go for a short session, keep it safe. Tony is filming, so we are he's keeping an eye on me. Of course, we had a wind change today. Had to go to a three meter wing. And I even had to put ski goggles on because the snow is horizontal. As far as my gear, obviously wearing a dry suit, five millimeter mitts, seven millimeter booties, and five millimeter hood under my helmet. And under the dry suit, you kind of want to plan like, kind of like skiing. Okay, we are up. Woo. Definitely on the extreme side. Let's see if we can ride some swell here. Do some sort of a downwind there. Yeah. It's hard to like even feel the bird really with eight millimeters booties. I think I'm gonna have to turn around. I don't have much water here. I'm gonna have to go upwind. Let's go upwind. Got some good waves, got a lot of wind. Here we go. Let's get out into deeper water before I attempt it. Have some rocks in here. Okay, here we go. One of the things you have to watch out for is going up wind with the apparent wind and the cold is your hands are going to get pretty cold fast. Not to mention my face, so pretty glad I got ski goggles on today. Riding in Idaho, winter storm. Three meters, Mantis. Maybe riding some swell. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that pretty dreamy? Woo. Yeah. Look at that. about the wing from Cabrina with the windows. I know there was some controversy about window material cracking in extremely cold temperature. We are putting it to a test here. But I did talk to Brody, the wing designer at Cabrina. He did say, no problem. The material they use is totally good for extremely cold condition. Let's try to go one more time out. Obviously at some point your deck is gonna freeze. You won't have any more grip and that is when it is time to go home. But for now we probably have another out and back that we could do. So let's cruise up in a bit and yeah. I 
I have to say, I definitely have a hard time feeling the bird. This is winter condition is not the time to really practice some new tricks. I can tell you that. It just takes your riding. Just try to like survive right in the straight line especially in this kind of condition okay one more drive here yeah, yeah it's, it's getting too strong right now I think the wind chill is getting to me Oh, I think that's it. It's just too strong. Too much snow that's horizontal. All right, that's it, guys. We did it. We got a session. Winter riding in Idaho. Let's go back to the beach and do a debrief with Tony because I don't even know if you guys can hear me so All right, so we are back inside because the weather just got crazy outside and it was just like uh, a bit too difficult for even the camera to run. So let's go uh, over some of the tips so that you guys can go out in the winter in extremely cold condition. But let's uh, first define like the weather limit. Um, what, uh, what, what are like the parameters that like, when you look at like wind temperature, that you are deciding like, I'm gonna go out or I'm not gonna go out? Uh, well, first off, I'm gonna look at wind direction and wind speed, and obviously I'm gonna look at temperature. Um, as we saw yesterday, the wind was coming out of the south, southwest, and it was pretty warm. Yeah. You know, it was comfortable. The yeah. grass was all soggy and everything else, and then all of a sudden we saw on the weather forecast that we were gonna get northeast winds, and so, that kind of, I knew it would change things. The temperature was supposed to drop and it did. And right on cue, yeah. it happened. And, and in fact, on my way to the beach, then we got the extreme, imminent extreme snow squall coming, which was something I'd never experienced before here. And going out in that, that really, you know, obviously we got pelted with horizontal yeah, yeah. hard snow. <laughs> so yesterday was not like a typical day where you would go out. We basically just tried to make it work to get some footage, you know, for the, for the video. But obviously, like on the normal session, that would have been like, all right, you know, um, that doesn't work. And, and, and so yesterday was about like 30, you know, low 30s. Um, and then do you, do you know the water temperature? Or? Uh, not sure on the water temperature, but it's got to be, I would maybe in the high 30s, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, and, and that works good because yesterday, if we would have gone out, been able to go out with the southwest winds with the larger wing, it, it would have worked no problem at all because, you know, it's warmer and everything else. Visibility was the big thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's where when I went out and I saw that using the goggles and then the goggles getting you know, iced up, take him off, and then foiling with one eye open uh, and the other eye just getting pounded and trying to look down and, and then I lost depth perception with the water. So, uh, no, and normally when there's northeast winds like that, if as long as it's not 
hard snow coming at you horizontally. It can be larger flakes slowly coming down, maybe lower wind speed. That's all doable. But when you get 30 degrees plus temperatures, that's okay. If you get up to 20 something miles an hour wind, you know, that's all you can do that. And especially if there's no uh, snow coming down. Yeah. So they, I've heard of a rule, uh, the rule of like 100, which is you add the water temperature to the air temperature. And if it's below 100 altogether, then it's not necessarily safe to go out. Um, obviously here in Idaho, you kind of like break this rule. So just to be aware, uh, this is not like ideal. If you go below 100, you are you know really going in, in extreme condition. So uh, saying that, um, in terms of gear, uh, you know it's not your first winter riding here. What have you found that like keeps you uh, the most comfortable out on the water in this kind of like extreme condition? Well, obviously a dry suit. Um, then you can layer up and I have a lot more movement than a very thick wetsuit um, and just being dry, you know, the the booties are fine, you know, seven millimeter booties. Yeah, my feet get wet and my legs get a little cold going out, but I kind of like that. Um, it, you know, you, you, you get your body more climatized to this weather, you know, um, and then, you know, the the different gloves are really critical because your hands are up high, you have apparent wind coming across the wing that are gonna start to ice up the gloves where I'll actually pull over and put my gloves, hands in the water and get the blood flow going back down my arms and get them wet again so there's not ice on the gloves. And then go back up and you can do this and you can stay out there for, for quite a while. I'll just make passes and I'll come in near the marina drop down, sit on the board, put my hand down, shake the ice off the wing, you know, it's all doable and it's, it, and you're having fun. And after a while you get pretty warm. So, you know. Yeah, I, I, I found that like, it's definitely challenging to go out. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm used to like Florida riding, you know, burnt shorts or shorty. And then I come here and I'm wearing eight millimeters booties and dry suit and, and, and it's definitely adding um, a level of challenge to just ride. You, you know, I don't feel the burn like I, I'm, I'm used to. Um, even though, you know, the dry suit ki still like keeps you like good mobility. It's just not as good like mobility as like, you know, everything else uh, when you ride like burn shot. So um, it is it is for sure like an added like uh, challenge. And in terms of like skill, we wanted to talk about it is like this is not like condition that you want to go out to like learn wing falling like you have to like practice that in like you know friendly condition and so that when you go out in extreme uh winter uh condition you have a base that is gonna allow you to like even ride because just i'm telling you like riding in a straight line in this kind of condition is a challenge uh on its own so yeah what, what would you say like because you, you you've been riding with a few people here that are like learning the sport like do you tell them like at, you know at what level you tell them like you can go in the winter or? um yeah well obviously it's up to each individual and what they've done with their history uh around the water and cold water you know obviously i've been around you know cold ocean water since like probably the mid 80s so the thing is if you're just starting out obviously you're going to have more of uh take more time with your experience maybe work up to you know late fall foiling early spring and then you know you can kind of bring those seasons closer together where you're dropping into winter yeah, yeah. Um, but but definitely you know you have a mental notebook of of temperature and stuff you know uh, just like with my experience yesterday when i saw the snow squall thing i said uh oh you know normally if i was there by myself no i'm not going out i, I know something weird's coming and the good part was, is I experienced that. So that's another box I can check off. And if that ever pops up again, I'm going to say, okay, I know what this is all about. Yeah. You know, and that kind of thing. Well, um, and in, and in safety, you know, we need to talk about safety, you know, for sure. Like don't ever like go out in this kind of condition, in this kind of condition on your own. Um, we, we were, you know, both, uh, on the spot, we were both like, you know, ready to go in the water if, if, if needed. Um, because it, it is winter and, and you have to know that like, you know, rescue like might take a while um, if, if you need. I mean, here, like I know the fire department doesn't have the, their boat in the water because, you know, it usually ice up and all of that. The, 
which is not dark. Um, so uh, you have to consider you know, all of this uh, before you go out. You, you need to have a plan. You need to know, you know this is how the wind is, is blowing. If something goes wrong and I'm being pushed downwind, where am I going? Um, how can I get back to shore? And have you, um, I know some people sometimes think about it with dry suit, have you thought about like what happened if you fall and, and you breach your dry suit with let's say the foil? Oh, well then, then it's game over. It's, it's get in as quick as you can, even if you can't get back up on foil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay down on that board and just drag the wing in and paddle in. And um, I, you know, if I can get up and foil and there's, I had a little bit of water in the dry suit, that's one thing. Um, but yeah, no, if, once that happens, then, you know, hopefully it's a small hole or whatever. Uh, and these dry suits are pretty tough. And that's one thing I will say about that. But, but yeah, you're going to, you're going to want to get in quickly. And the board I use here in this kind of conditions is going to be a very floaty board. Obviously I don't want a low volume board. I want to be able to lay down on that thing and just either knee paddle it in or, or prone paddle it all the way in. Plus that'll help keep me warm if I did get some water in the suit. It, it's really a survival thing, you know, and that comes back to the challenge of, of doing this. You come back in and you've had this kind of dangerous challenge and you survived it and you learn from it. And so then, yeah, you're always checking your gear. You know, it, it's, I've even worn um, a thin wetsuit pair of pants underneath my dry suit, just in case I did get uh, the gasket or something leak a little bit and I could feel the cold water come up and say, okay, you know, now it's time to get back in in the next few minutes. Yeah, so just make sure you don't, you know, obviously go like super far, always go as far as you feel comfortable, like, you know, like body dragging back or, or just like sitting on your bone and, and coming back like that. If like you said, like if you do breach your, your, your dry suit, it's not like it's gonna fill up instantly. You could just like, you know, okay, you, you, you took on a bit of water during the, the impact or whatever, climb back on your bone. Yes, you are wet, yes, you are getting cold, but if you sit on the bone and you're not too far, you should be able to make it back. Right. Um, with the dry suit, I know some people have been asking like, you know, what if you, you know, when you fall, do you take on water? And what I found was with the dry suit, um, once you wear gloves, booties, and hood, all of this sit on top of the seal. So it's very unlikely that you are gonna take in some water. And I've, I've, I've been, I went out kiting uh, like that, took some big crashes, and not a drop of water came in. Uh, however, if you go with just, you know, it's, let's say it's, it's warmer, you don't need to wear booties, you don't need to wear gloves, now the seal is exposed, and yes, if you take a big crash, you might have some water uh, going in. Uh, but I found that like, as long as you have something like your gloves and your, your booties and your hood sitting on the seal, you should be 100% uh, fine. Have you like, ever been like Well, yeah, most, most of the time, if I have a dry suit on, I'm gonna have, yeah, we're all gonna have, yeah. you know, the booties, gloves and everything, yeah. And you know, the booties, some of the booties can get wet. Uh, those eight millimeter booties are almost like a dry booty. Um, so that's one thing you'll know too, when you do get into the water, as you're going out, you'll feel the cold around your legs. Cause I'm just wearing wool long underwear and I feel my feet get wet and I'm like, okay, that's good. But obviously if I start to feel really water coming up into the suit, you know, then, then, you know, okay, it's in, in the seal and you know, you have to adjust the seals when you trim them, when you get yeah, the yeah. suit and all that. And you know, once you get that, um, you know, yeah, but you, you want to really protect all that stuff and having the gloves, obviously, which you're going to need anyways, you know. Um, what, do you have like a strategy in terms of like layers, like things that you like to, um, that, that you found like work better uh, to keep you warm? Yeah, I first used uh, like on the pants, I used a two millimeter, like a hydro skin wetsuit. And now I'm using uh, a real thick wool uh, you know, long john underwear. And then on the top, I have the same thing, a wool top. And then I have, I even use this sweater here. Um, and I'll get it thick enough to where it's going to be really warm because then your extremities can, can get warmed up quicker. But also I got to be able to get the jacket up over my shoulders. And with all of that, it can kind of be a challenge, but once it's up, I have plenty of movement. So I'm not too worried about that, you know. 
Well, I think that's uh, great information. If there is somebody out there that wants to get uh, into winter wing foiling, um, you know, just make sure you, you have the skills, you have the equipment, safety is good, you, you, you have a plan, um, and, and uh, it's still gonna be, you know, um, a bigger risk than, than, than the submarine, but you know, you, you, you do what, uh, what you wanna do. Um, and now, what would you tell somebody that's looking at wing falling from the shore, watching you having the best time of your life, but they are thinking like, you know, I can't, I can't do it, uh, I'm not fit, or, or I'm too old. Um, what, what would you tell them? Well, I think if you really want to do it, there's, there's all levels of wing foiling. You know, there's not, obviously the winter time, you're not going to jump in and do that right away. But I think just building up, if you really want to do it, you just, you keep doing it, keep trying. You know, like I've said before that you just don't want to give up, you know, if you really want to do it. I mean, go out and try it. Um, yeah, you're going to have to buy the gear and stuff, but you know, I think that it's been, uh, you know, it's like been a magic carpet ride as far as water sports for me. It's like almost the bottom of the bucket list. And so I want to kind of keep doing that, traveling and doing it and, and just, you know, find your level where you can get in. There's guys out there that go out in conditions like this with wetsuits, you know. Um, so there's all different levels of, on the higher end and there's different levels on the lower end. And no matter where you're at, you know, that's where you're going to be. You don't need to be at a certain level like you see somebody else, you know, don't don't let that intimidate you. Just just keep on doing what you think you can do. And uh, I think you'll continually get better if you keep trying and kind of taking it to the next step. And you don't have to get all radical and stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Start off in the summertime. Yeah. Light winds, whatever. <laughs> well, uh, if you guys haven't seen already uh, the video that we shot with Tony, it was more like summertime. Uh, the, the, right. the, the, the wing falling uh, on, the, on the lake in Idaho. Uh, check it out. Gonna put the link right here. But on that note, um, thank you for watching. I hope you guys got inspired to get out there, no matter the condition, no matter your level, no matter how old you are, it's a fun, fun sport for everybody. The community is always amazing. So definitely get into it, go out there, have fun, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Tony. All right, take care.